guys, this is Matt at Kitty Tech. Let's go check out what we got going on with the machines today. So here we have our latest uh, swing set system we're working on. No, it's not a Terminator arm. <laughs> yeah, we've done a few different swing set systems in the past. We have them for 99 to 06 Chevy, 07 and up, Chevy 1500 two-wheel drive. Uh, we have one for Raptor two-wheel drive as well, F-150 Raptor two-wheel drive. Um, and we had a couple customers with some ZR2s that they did some custom suspension kits on. And they're also two-wheel drive and they wanted to beef up their steering so uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're working on our Colorado Canyon ZR2 swing set steering kit. And this is like the main part of it, is this the billet swinger. Um, so obviously it's not done yet, but uh, it's all 6061 aluminum, designed in-house, machined in-house. Uh, these insert, or the pivot hole right here, gets like a stainless insert, so the bolt doesn't wear out the aluminum. Um, just a super nice, solid, you know, way to build a, bulletproof steering, which you've seen on almost all of our builds now, run this style steering, and it's just a bulletproof way to do it. Get some nice insurance, not worry about blowing up your factory steering rack every time you go out. <laughs> yeah, basically the, the, the easy, the the easy way to explain it is from my brain onto like a piece of paper with like a box of crayons to to his brain, to the computer, to the machine, and then sometimes, you know, we'll be machining the first part and then we'll change a couple little things as we're going and then get that one perfect how we want it and then we'll just make them all like that. So that's, that's like the easiest way to explain yeah, pretty <laughs> what much. we're doing out there. Yeah, pretty easy. A, a to... A to B and C and D. A to Z. <laughs> Is it A to Z? <laughs> and then just everything I've been doing for since 2006, and just trying to bring billet into it. Yeah. Not not say get away from fabricated welded parts, but just trying to find a way to tie that billet kind of into everything. Yeah. So Z definitely design style and. Yeah, the billet was already here, so there was a lar there was already quite a bit of billet stuff around. Um, and so all it was was kind of just, um, even, even some of the stuff that we're doing now is just cleaning up what he already had and uh, just making it look a little bit nicer. But yeah, the geometry is all the same. Uh, yeah. on take some all of those the basic kits. designs from, yeah. from when I first made a billet part and now that we're 100% in control of it with designing right here, machining right outside, now we can just kind of tweak everything to exactly how we want it and add style and you know strength and just little details into every single part. Here's a perfect comparison of the uh, the evolution of all these parts and having these capabilities in house. Is this what our old steering swinger used to look like? And this is after being on a truck for two years, never coming off, never had a failure, but I always wanted to do them out of billet. So I actually save a bunch of weight and to keep the precision like way tighter on tolerance and just a lot stronger too. You see these ears, just a lot bigger. But uh, yeah, it's another advantage of having these in house and being able to update and change the way we do things. Here's another one, perfect example of evolution on our parts and all this stuff, mind you, like this kit had a price of what it was and we changed everything to this, you know, billet to make it better price stayed the same. That's another thing. People are like, oh, well, I'll sell me the old one with the fabricated arms. It's like, well, it's the same price. Might as well just have the better part. And that's just a better way to do it. So why not do it that way? Yeah. And this one was actually one of the ones off of the gray truck. And you can see, like, it's, it's been through some stuff. I've had that truck 15, 20 feet in the air. <laughs> bunch of big whoops and it 
It never gave me a problem, never wore out the bushings. Everything worked on it. And then here's, you know, our old arm, just a basic straightforward design, nothing fancy. It takes a steel insert for the threads, but just basic, straightforward. And here's like an updated, you know, since, since we make them in-house now, we do pinch bolts here for the, for the rod ends. We add clearance in here for the back of the spindle. This arm doesn't have it, but a lot of the ones we would hit right here, so we would just literally sand this out by hand before anodize, but uh, now we're able to add all that into it. And then just, you could tell the, the styling and the finish and the tool pass and everything is just night and day, 10 times better. talking about billet parts probably my favorite thing out of billet that we've ever made is our trailing arms mostly just because you know you look at a truck and you see a big huge 60 inch piece of billet hanging from the back of it and it's got so much detail and there's it's such a large area where you can get a bunch of different details put into it you know top sides and bottom they're all different they were definitely a task to machine our machine can only throw about 55 inches eat on its x-axis so we couldn't get this all in one throw on each side so each side basically had to get done in two ops and then matt will explain all that yeah definitely a challenging part but yeah breaking it down into basically six operations where I, where the first operation would be doing the whole side of the trailing arm we had to split that into two but again keeping it in-house is super important to us uh, especially for how we wanted to make it and so we started off with the, uh, the first two operations, which is the, the first side of the arm. And then we flipped it around, did the same thing on the opposite end, uh, first side and second side. And then um, after that, it was basically just clearing out the material in the middle, making the pocket really nice, put a lot of shape to it. And lastly, the last operation is flipping it around, putting some draining holes in there and adding the last bit of styling cue to it. But it was pretty challenging, a lot of fun. I mean. Who doesn't like trailing arms that are billet? Because yeah. they're pretty cool <laughs> to look at. That, and you can always anodize them. They stand out. They're right in your face. Like, yeah. And we made four sets, and they're all sold. So we got to yeah. make some more now. <laughs> yeah, a couple of nice trucks have them on. Are getting them on now. And um, like I said, when they're when they're anodized, they look really sharp. Uh, nothing stands out more. Yeah. Yeah. We did a set of these in gold, and we sent them out to our friends at, uh, in Texas at Rust Lab. For Bailey's truck and they, they have a mocked up on it right now and it just looks insane big huge you know 55 inch trailing arm mocked up on a full-size truck it's, it's pretty cool I'm excited to see that thing that thing run and see these things get on more builds that we aren't building so that's pretty cool to see as well it also helps tie in the whole back end so the whole back half that we make here everything from the fuel cell cradle that's laser cut all the billet pieces I mean by the time this is all done it'll be all anodized gold yeah, the trailing arm going up to the sway bar lane, the sway bar arm itself integrated to the fuel cell, which could possibly be anodized gold. We've done it in the past, but uh, <laughs> that's a big yeah. maybe, but um, that's a lot of space. tank that big. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, but yeah, all of, the, all of the billet, even the upper arms or the upper links yeah, are the billet. Upper links. And so that kind of ties it all in. Explain your fixturing to the people. Yeah, so this is the, the bulkhead that we just came out with. 
basically going to be equipped on the, the free runners that we have here as well as a full tube chassis truck that we're going to be putting together in the future. It will house the, um, the upper control arms, the lower control arms, the steering box, all of the geometry necessary to keep the, uh, the right track. Basically firewall forward, this is everything that's, everything is built off of this. So yeah, going back to uh, the table and the fixturing process, basically the table is in our computer and what we do is uh, once the bulkhead is designed, we'll go ahead and set the bulkhead on the fixture table and from that point we'll constrain the bulkhead where we're going to use it for our other assemblies or sub-assemblies to tie into it. In this case, we have the bulkhead which is the front end of the truck and now that it's tied into the table, um, we can start adding the different sub-assemblies like the cab, the floor, the uh, fuel cell cradle, and we can constrain all of that and hold it in place exactly where it's going to land on the computer so that it's 100% accurate. Uh, everything is drawn up, so the table's uh, drawn up in the computer, uh, everything to the towers, every individual fixture plate. The and we build these towers too. Yeah. So this isn't are, like an off-the-shelf item, like every fixture piece here is something that yeah. we made for what we're doing. Yeah, so even, yeah, the bolt pattern, everything was all uh, set up here in-house. So whenever we have a new assembly done or sub-assembly, it's just a matter of throwing it on the table, setting the height, you start to put the towers exactly where you want them in the computer, and then once you constrain those towers exactly where they're gonna, where they're gonna be for what you're gonna need, then you start building off all these individual plates off of that. And it works out really good. Uh, everything's pretty much exactly where it has to be so that we can go on to the next process, which is basically going to be, in this case, the floor. The floor and then the rear um, the Yeah, we'll build mounts. a floor that connects the front bulkhead to like the link pockets. And then we'll have the fuel cell cradle area floating there and then we'll connect basically A, B, and C together. Yeah. And then uh, it, it's a really good foundation and it's always going to be square. So that's always really nice. Yeah, like these ever, keep the upper arm mounts where they need to be, lower arm mounts are exactly where they need to be, so none of that's off. So it's pretty much, if we didn't have these fixtures, we really couldn't build this. I mean, we could, we'd just have to hand make fixtures, but yeah. there's no real way to build this accurately without fixturing it the way we did or, you know, another way of fixturing it. Yeah, definitely helps, especially with all the welding. The welding tends to want to move things around either you know, pull things back or deform things a little bit. The fixtures keep that from happening. They hold it in place so that through all the heating and everything else, they hold their shape and their dimensions and every place where they have to be for uh, for the overall picture to be complete correctly. So, and like that, you can see how we fixed her like a floor over there for like our Baja Bug A-arm platform. How we built all those fixtures for that. And that kind of keeps the floor in place and helps just locating everything while we're welding it too. There's even more pieces that hold that together that aren't on right now because we don't need them on there. But it just yeah. helps. All the laser cut tubes and everything, everything just kind of clicks in the fixtures and has its home. There's no measuring or guesswork or anything. It all just locks in and you can just keep building. Yeah, manufacturing the floors is way faster now. Uh, just putting the, together the floor, make, knowing that it's square, uh, being able to weld it all and not warping or bowing and it's just always flat super fast to put together now. Yeah, so like that floor we actually built, well, got it all in there, welded one side complete, let it cool, flipped it over, locked it back in the fixture, and then welded the other side, and then let that cool, flip it back over upright, and then continue building from there. So like a bunch of stuff on here, I had to get it in the fixtures, weld a bunch of stuff, and then put other plates on. Like this one, there's welds underneath you'll never see. Same thing with this plate here. Know, in other areas, I had to weld a bunch and then start adding other pieces in. And then I'll weld as much as I can on here, and then we'll pull it out of there for final welding, and then we'll actually put it back in the fixture to tie the floor and the rest of the truck into it. Yeah, and another cool note, too, is the fact that uh, not only is the fixture helping, but the actual parts themselves are fixtured also. So they're self-fixturing, so, so to speak. So everything is going to have a key. Uh, everything has a, uh, either a spot that it has to go to, a stop, um, the way it overlays and keys into itself really holds the shape too. So that's another part of uh, making everything nice and square is making the parts designed to actually hold their shape 
without a fixture, and the fixture just makes it that much better. Everyone always asks what uniballs we use and rod ends and stuff like that, and everything we get is from FK. That is all. All right, so here we have our short course four link kit, uh, getting it all packaged up, ready to go out to our buddy Kyle at Rust Lab in uh, Texas. So got everything pulled and now I'm just gonna bag everything up and box it up and ship it out to him. So with the short course four link kit, uh, this is everything you get with it. You get all the rod ends from FK, jam nuts, uniballs, snap rings, all the spacers, shot clevis spacer, rear end upper spacer, upper link frame side, lower link axle side, lower link frame side right there. And then uh, everything is perfect length to, to have a nice geometry setup. We got our 55 inch lowers and then a 41 inch upper with the rod ends in it. It gets you about 47 inches. Um, so it just works works out really good. It's the same, same exact dimensions as the links we did like on the Raptor Punisher and a few other trucks that we'll show you. But uh, it's a nice way to start out, you know, in your garage or a do-it-yourself or just another fab shop. So it's a good, uh, good starting point for a solid rear suspension. Doing it. Doing it. Doing it well. Okay, old Cool J. Why? <laughs> <Quack. laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if the whole thing just fell off the wall? <laughs> Let's take it off for real life. Three hours later. <laughs> <laughs>